gentlemen, let me call this meeting to order. For the record, this is the January meeting for the Wallace Lowndes County Zoning Board of Appeals. And I'm going to cut a little shortcut here since we only have one case and there's only one person in the audience. I'm going to dispense with my usual speech. And we're just going to jump right in to the first case, which is Lowndes County case VAR 2014-15. Darrell Seconder, 887 Georgia Highway 135 North Native. Ms. Carmella, you have the show. Good afternoon and happy new year to all of you. Thank you, you too. Our only case for this evening will be VAR 2014-15, a request by Mr. Darrell Seconder. This is an attempt to reestablish a second residence on the subject property. Property is located on Georgia 135 North in the Naylor area. Um, several years, um, subject property had two residences on there. When the two residences were on the property, it was considered um, to be legal but non-conforming. But that second residence was moved off the property. It's been over a year. Actually, it's been several years. Um, and the applicant would like to reestablish that use onto the property. There's an existing septic system that supported that home that was there. Mr. Sevenger owns the property to the north um, where he currently lives. And I'll allow him to give you the story about that residence, but he would like to pick that residence up, move it to the spot where the manufactured home is located. Um, the existing septic system was permitted. Um, he went, went and had that checked out and it's still in good working order. There is a well that will support this second residence. Um, in staff's opinion, the property is sufficient enough in size to accommodate um, the second residence. The only drawback is the zoning, the current zoning that's on the property, R10. And normally you don't find an acre and a half lot associated with an R10 zoning. But that's the zoning that's in place. Um, in staff's estimation, we didn't have a concern with that second residence going on to that property. As such, recommended a, a recommendation of approval with no conditions. Okay. My first question, and it may be that we have to get Mr. Seconder to answer this question, but since we are reestablishing a non-conforming use, I know it says in the paperwork he is not planning on using this house for residence. It's going to be for uh, storage. storage. Yes. But should it change in the future and he decide to put somebody in that as a rental, what does that do to the county, if anything? Really nothing. We're going to have to permit this as a residence, whether he uses it as a residence or as storage. It's a house, it meets the requirements as a dwelling, so we're going to have to permit it as a house. So if he okay. decides to put somebody in there tomorrow, then, you know, the permits are in place for you to do so. Okay. And that, in turn, is not going to kick in anything that, to have the second residence. It has to be family relations to live in it, or can be rented to anyone? To anybody. And that's not a problem with the county? No. Good enough. A residence is a residence. Good enough. Good enough. Okay, does anybody else have questions or comments about this case or come up? I do. Um, you mentioned that it's going to go in place of the mobile home that's there, or the mobile home is going to remain on site as well? The mobile home that was there has been moved off. It's been moved off for several years, and this home is going to go in the same spot as that where that manufactured home is located. Previously. Yes. Yeah. So the mobile home that's on the, the property right now is going to remain? There's no mobile home on the property. There's only a site built house. What is in the backyard? Can I address Mr. Secretary? Uh, give me just a second. Okay. Let's, let's get to that part. Okay. Yeah, as of now, there is a resident. Um, his parents' old residence is on the property now. And I believe there is a storage building on the property. I rode by, I didn't recall, unless I was living in the wrong lot, I didn't see a mobile home. There's not one. It, it's been gone for several years. 
Well, that's what I'm saying was when I rode by there, yeah. I didn't see. A it's been gone for several years. Okay. Everybody? Yes, yes. Currently, Mr. Sessinger lives in this residence here. This is his parents' site built home. This is the spot where there used to be a double wide manufacturing home, which now he wants to move this house. There's a house in front of that now. Right there. On, on this property, there's only that residence. It's an acre and a half. I've got a question for Carmel. Please go ahead. Carmel, what uh, regulation would require uh, the establishment of a non conforming use where he would have to have relatives stay on that property, like he has mentioned? What, what, what kind of circumstances would require that? Actually, this is simply for my own edification. I'm just interested in that. We do, whenever you have multiple residences on the same lot, usually in our ag zoning, we tie that with family. So in other words, if it's... But even, you know, if even ag, if it was ag, you know, he... If it was ag corporate zoning, he can do this as a matter of right. We wouldn't be here today. Okay. Because it's residential zoning. And we gave him the option of changing the zoning. There are like six options Mr. Seconder had. He could have subdivided the lot, go through the rezoning process. Um, and those were would have been expensive, with surveying and right. going through the Divided the two tracks. Mm -hmm. And then um, the trouble was divided into two. He wouldn't have had enough to accommodate a wellness set of tenure, because you need an acre each lot to come in what we said. Any other questions or discussions? Did I ask your question, Ms. Clark? I, I guess I'm, I apologize, I'm just not sure. I, I wrote out there, mm -hmm. and it, it appeared to me, and possibly I was looking at the wrong place, but just where the sign is located for for this um, variance. Just to the right of it is a residence. There's not, not much space there between. And in the back of that appeared to be what I thought was a mobile home to the back of the property. And I don't I don't know if for sure if it is a mobile home. That's what, what it appeared to be. I thought then that must be what they were doing, moving that mobile home out and putting this one there. That made sense to me. Okay. But on the other side of where the sign is located, mm -hmm. in not much distance, again, there's there's another house that's mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess I do have, I'm sorry, but I do have some concern about everything being there. What, what is in the back of that house? Is, is it a mobile home? Is it? There's a half acre there, nothing. Well, the back there, look, that half acre, there's another half acre, nothing. There's a house to the right of that half acre back there on the dirt road. But that half acre where I want to move that house, yes. there's nothing back there except Nikki's off. So you must have been looking at the wrong place or something. Now there's a house trailer on the corner on the back right there, but you can't yeah. see it from the five acre lot. Mr. Sagan, may I get up here? Yeah. Please. Please. Let the record show that Mr. Sagan is addressing the board. May I get there? Yeah. Walk over there, whatever you want. All right, uh, this is where I live. There's an acre there. There's an acre here, there's an acre here, and I've got a half acre here. All right, this, this is where a mobile home was years ago. It's been gone several years. Nothing there, there's an acre. And back of it, over here, there's an empty half acre. 
And then the Grand Bay Road. See that there acre right a half acre there is it. And this is it. Except pine trees. And the water that I'll hook up to this comes from my parents' house. It furnishes the water from my house and it furnishes the water of this trail. And, the, and there's two septic tanks there. One was old and not usable, but there's a newer septic tank there that I can hook up to the house. So between your parents' house and the house to the left is where you're wanting That's to right. It's half an acre. Okay. And they, a long time ago, there was a house there. And uh, my grandparents lived in it. When they died, I got my father to set it. I said, when you got real property, it's always something to do so and so. All right, my son put a double wide there years later. And he moved to Savannah, so they sold, sold the double wide. And put the safety tank there. And there's a half acre there. I like to say, right back of it is an empty half acre to the Grand Bay Road. And the only uh, mobile home is right here on the corner of the Ash Road and Grand Bay Road. That's the only mobile home back on in that square. Can you tell me what that rooftop is in the, the north uh, west corner? Right here? No, sir, up. On Grand Bay Road, come to your left. Oh, oh. That's a house. Uh, within, That's a house. Within the, within the um, rectangle. No, so just to the right of that. Right there? In, within the rectangle. Within the yellow rectangle. Oh, oh. oh yeah. Back of Mama's. Me and Father were good enough. Honey, be busy. Yes, sir. There's a shelf back there where we store stuff. We, plus, there's a wood building there we call our honey house where we process our honey. Okay. So there's two buildings on that acre. That my mother called the house now. Okay, and that's probably what what I see. And I've been there since 1949. I was 13 years old when mother and I was. Daddy built, Daddy built my house. And it's home. All right. Any other, did, did that answer your question? And my wife has been wanting to build a new house for years, and I'm kind of old to start that. I was uh, 78 years old, but I, I've been promising her if I can hold out, I'm going to build her a new house. And, but it's not going to be fancy, maybe $120,000, $30,000 house. My wife, she she don't believe in throwing it away now. And it's cluttered, and you have to walk a trail. And, we're going to move the house up there, and it's going to be for storage. And we're going to build a new house. I said, she said, what you want? I said, just a new house where I can walk all over the house without having to go through a, a trail. Y'all don't know. Y'all don't realize I know what I'm talking about. All right. But so that's the way it is. Okay. Appreciate your time. Not a problem. I was just having a conversation. I told him the last deed we had of record was when his mother passed in 2001, where she deeded that property to all the sons, his three sons. And I can't find where that deed has been transferred to Mr. Sedinger as, as sole owner of the property. Um, his three brothers, one died just about a month ago. Um, and there hasn't been enough to be done to just transfer the property to his sole ownership. But I actually didn't really have a problem with that. He said he didn't, but... Okay, based on that information, do we need to postpone action until we confirm that it is in his name and not... Well, part, pardon me, but it, the property is in my name, right? That deed, that 2001 yeah. deed, yeah. it's in your name as well as your two other brothers. Okay. Okay. And he was under the impression that his attorney had done the paperwork to just solely put it in his name. It may be done, I just, we didn't have record of it. Okay. So again, is that reason to hold this up? Or if, if we act on it now and he doesn't do what he's supposed to do and creates a problem, does that create a problem for the county later? It, 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 it can, potentially. Because all that, the 
parties, interested parties are not even involved. Right. Right. So we yeah. need to postpone action on this for 30 days? Can we? Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, from a legal standpoint, obviously, he has no standing to, to file an application to, for the variance unless he's the 100% fee simple interest owner. And unless he's got uh, some probate document, a deed of assent, showing that his brother, through his estate, has transferred that property to him, and then there's a there's another brother, there's a, either got to be a quick claim deed or some type of deed vesting title in his name. Otherwise, he doesn't have standing to even file an application. So right now, everything should be tabled until such time as he's got proper title. Be simple title, 100% be simple title. You want to say that, Senator? All right. But we settled it when my mother died. Uh, Mr. Bennett was the lawyer. And uh, all the taxes and everything come. Daryl second here. And I got the deeds and everything. And well, if he's got the deeds, says he for I've got right. deeds. Yeah. Well, but Carmella, I you need more time to review the information that he has available. Mm -hmm. This is the only. That's the latest that we were able to find. Okay, well, that's then, a 2001 meeting. Well, this is, uh, yeah, I mean, this is for uh, Lu Luel, Luel, the estate. Pardon? This is for sake of come forward. This is uh, Luel was your Luel, uh, that was my mother. That was your mother. Yes. And then this property was conveyed through her estate to three siblings, Donald, James, and Daryl. Yes. Um, and this was back, done back in 01. Yes. Now, um, you're, you know, unless, do um, you have any type of uh, quick claim deed out of uh, the other siblings to well, you? I, all I know is I got the deeds. They had six deposit box. Okay. Well, you probably, uh, Carmela, do you have somebody full title on this? I, we did our research um, based on the tax assessment um, records. They have and and it, it should show off on the tax assessment. That's the name. Whether it be a deed of a sand or a quick claim. So you, the property was also given to your brother? I know, I knew. Yes. I was the executor of the state. And uh, they and had some money. And I owned the home property. And so we settled. They got their part of the money, my part of the money with uh, to them. And I got the uh, estate. Well, so the perhaps property. you need to give uh, okay. Carmilla some more documents. Well, well, this is, see, this was 91. And this, I mean, 2001. This was 2001. Um, hold on one second, and then um, so then we got a quick claim deed from um, from Donald and James yeah, two to the to to Daryl. So that's that 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 sells. He, he owns it. Okay, right. he owns it. Well, I knew it. Should should be. He's got it. He's got it. Just double check. Just double check. Yeah, I had a lawyer in. I, it, I knew I got all the tax notices and everything. So. She's just being cautious. No worries. All right. No, sorry. 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 Not a problem. We went up on a rabbit trail on that one. That's my reliance on the Q public solely. Yeah. Well, that's sometimes, that's yeah, sometimes that's they'll do a deed of assent and not do the other court claim deeds because they're done signed, you know, one after another. Mm -hmm. They're just missing. It's not going to be a deal. Okay, so at this point we have determined that he is he, the owner. he has standing. standing to do what he is requesting us to do. Okay, any other questions or discussions for Carmela at this time? Mr. Seconder, would he, would you like to add anything to the record for this? Yeah, I think I've done <laughs> done told you everything tonight. Okay, good enough. But good I appreciate enough. All your indulgence and putting up with redneck like me. Not a problem. Not a problem. Uh, that's that's the way this court works with the folks, not with the lawyers. Yeah. Appreciate it. Okay. Is there anyone else here in support of this application? Is there anyone here in opposition to this application, or is there anyone here that has a question about what is being requested? Was there any response to your office, Carmela, that we need to be aware of? No, sir. No. Okay. You have the case, ladies and gentlemen. Does anybody have any further questions or discussions before I call the question? No, I make a motion to approve. I haven't asked for the motion. <laughs> I have a motion on the floor. He's, a, he's out of order. From, I know, Robert from Mr. Alvarado. Signing criteria D. 
Well, okay. We have a motion to exempt the request as presenting citing criteria D. Do I have a second? Second. Do I have a second from the flower? All in favor, please raise a hand. Unanimous. Good luck with it, Mr. Flower. I mean, Mr. Secretary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm bad about names. I'm bad. Okay, everything's good to go. Uh, if you would stay in touch with Carmelo to make sure that all of the whatever paperwork you may need when you start doing it, sure. all the setbacks and all sure. of it. Sure. All right. She's been nice to work with. She's a nice lady. She, she is. Her. She is. I agree. Okay, the next. Item for business is approval of the minutes. I scan through them and didn't see anything. Does anybody else have anything? Corrections, additions, deletions? Can I get a motion to accept the minutes as presented? I have a motion from Ms. Gaskin, second. Second from Ms. Portman. All in favor, raise a hand. Unanimous, good. Let's move on. Other items, we have A, training opportunities. Who is going to talk to us about training opportunities? Mr. Martin, you have the podium. The lectern, not Very the, the lectern. Um, at different intervals throughout the year, in different places around the state, the Carl Benson Institute of Government, it's on what they call their planning and zoning training seminars, which are very, very useful for board members, uh, pretty much board members who haven't been here for a while. Um, the problem that we often run into is that these are up in the northern part of the state. It requires overnight travel, therefore becomes expensive, and there's just no money in the budget. However, this spring, the training is coming to this room. So mark your calendars, April 14th and 15th. The 14th is session one, which is the beginning training session. And then the, uh, the next day is more of the advanced training. For those who want to take both or those who have already been through a training the first time and we're hoping to get uh, perhaps discounts or something for hosting it in the room but at the very worst we would pay the tuition which is something like a hundred dollars a member um, so it's an opportunity that is worth seizing we'll be talking about it some more in march particularly your march meeting we'll have more information about the details of what is included in each of those training events but go ahead and Pencil it in on your calendar. Is that, that all day? That is on a Tuesday and Wednesday. And the all day. day? All day. All day. Tuesday and Wednesday. From about 8.30 to 4, 8.30 to 5. Something like that. Typically, they start in the morning like that, but break before the actual Indian time. Lunch will be provided and that sort of thing. So we'll have more details for you later, but it's, it's good. It's the first time we've had an event like this in you know, four and a half years. We've had them in Thomasville. We, we've had them one time before, yeah. several years ago. Several years ago. Yep. And then we had the statewide planning conference here in 2010, um, which we took a lot of people to. Um, but nothing since then. All right. If anybody can make it, we would like to have you make it. I will do my best to be here as well. I've got a question. Yes. Whatever happened to the uh, lawsuit when we got sued by Lamar? Yeah, they are still pending in the courts. Oh, really? All three suits, yes. And still closed up again? Pending. Have been a hearing yet? No hearing yet. Been a lot of back and keep, forth amongst attorneys. You don't like to write a lot. Keep, keep it posted. Keep no, it posted. I'll look definitely. As soon as I learn something, I know something. But I have not heard anything since before the holidays. And back then, it was simply. Yeah. Discussion. They've been trying to get a hearing scheduled and with a judge who is willing to take it. Some of the local judges are not as willing for whatever reason. Uh, some conflicts that they may have, I don't know what those are. Yeah. So I'm waiting to hear from the city attorney's office. I haven't heard anything yet since early summer. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, at this time, I would like to recognize Mr. Scott Orenstein for his time on this board with us and as vice chair for a number of years. 
Scott, if you would come forward. We do have a little remembrance for you. I'm going to miss you if you won't go away. Three blows. You missed all his last name. Three colors in my face. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I said you missed all On behalf of the Lonely Board of Appeals. Scotty. Well, do you want to get the whole group? Yeah, I'll get one. I'll get you a group talk. That's the Valley Steel Company. Yeah. <laughs> Presented to Scott Orenstein and appreciation for your dedication and service to the City of Alaska and Alaska County Board of Appeals 2007 to 2014. And we do appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Something else for Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> to to Thanks to the staff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Happy New Year to you, Gretchen. Yeah. All too. Have a good one.